Kristen, what made you want to hop on this project? I mean, to be honest, like to think that you could um, draw a picture of a woman who kind of like looks like carbonated water that's been shoved into a bottle and shaken up and shaken up and shaken up and shaken up. And the whole time you're thinking, God, that's a lot like the, the frustrations that I have as a woman that, that exist, you know, still. And then by the end, something so heinous is a result that, you know, theoretically it's kind of like something that is, uh, you know, in a, in a slug line, this story is like really topical. But then you go, oh God, I feel crazy. I've just empathized with like a, with a, with a murderer. Yeah. And I like the relationship between the, the two women because it is sort of an imagined um, guess at what might have gone on within the walls. And it was really detailed and nuanced and the way that these women kind of got to know each other in a time where they weren't allowed to and like, the way that they bolstered each other emotionally was uh, real, really real to me. And um, so when she came to me with it, I was I also have grown up just absolutely like loving everything she's done. So I was like, yep, <laughs> absolutely. And you spoke about the relationship between the two women, which was rumored, right? So what made you want to have that focus be part of the film? I think everybody loves a tragic love story. And um, there are many accounts of, of Lizzie having affairs with other women, um, notably Nance O'Neill, who was an, an actress in, at, at the time, and, and just going to the house, which is now a bed and breakfast, and staying there and knowing that the two women were in the house together. It's hard to imagine that they weren't in cahoots, that somehow they hadn't planned this whole thing together. And then just what their relationship was like, you know, if they were both so like alone and like there must have been some sort of camaraderie and mm. and um, so it just kind of grew out of what, what we imagined. Okay, let's talk about the murder scene because <laughs> I love that you're laughing. Obviously it's very gruesome, but also you're nude in it. So can you talk about that decision and where that stems from? Oh, uh, well, I've been, really I've been, I've been yeah. nude Murder. before. Nudity. <laughs> I mean, girls yeah. together in a house. It's like, oh, God. Oh, no. it's like all the best things in one movie. I think so. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, to me, that was a that was like my choice. Actually, I said I think that she should perform these murders naked. I think she sheds, you know, the the garbs that she's so restricted by, and just she just goes nuts. I mean, she just like becomes possessed and is taken over and has to, you know, follow through with, carry through with this, this, this act. And yeah. It really helps too. Like if you, if you, if you have these women who are animals and they're pushed to a point, if you corner any animal to a point that they think that they have absolutely no other choice, it's so nice that, that she's not wearing anything because you really see this stark nature of her gender, because it's like, that's what the movie is about. So when that, you know, you root for a root for her, and then that scene happens, and you're like, wait, ah, oh, and you're hit over the head yeah. with what it's about. And it's, yeah, like, visual. Literally. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>